Welcome to a new video series on the history of light. My name is Greg Getter. I'm a lighting technologist and over the past two years, I've been building a business focused on improving sleep. In September 2018, we launched our first product called Bedtime Bulb. It's a light bulb you use before going to sleep that drastically cuts down on blue light. If you're not aware, there's scientific evidence that suggests blue light at night may interrupt the circadian rhythm. The circadian rhythm is our body clock that tells us when to go to sleep and when to wake up. And when it's interrupted, our sleep patterns shift, which can have a number of negative health implications in the short term and long term. But lately I've been interested in learning more and sharing how we got here in the first place. In this series, I want to cover how our relationship with lighting up the night has changed over the centuries. While this won't be exhaustive, we'll be looking at several key technology developments. And not only that, I want to cover some of the practical implications of various lighting technologies, such as changes in productivity and the effects that each technology has had on our health. I think there's no better place to start than with the developments leading up to open flame style gas street lighting. This series was prompted by a recent trip I took to a community called Palmetto Bluff. It's a new urbanist development near Savannah, Georgia that's lit almost entirely by gas street lighting. Even though Palmetto Bluff was almost entirely undeveloped just 20 years ago, the planners made a very interesting design choice to light up the whole place with gas. Most of the shots that I'm including in this video were shot at Palmetto Bluff. Let's start with a history of gas street lighting. In the 15th through 18th centuries, cities like Paris and London started to require their residents to hang lanterns in the front of their homes at night. There were even penalties for not doing so. Until the late 18th century, most lighting was powered by fuels such as olive oil, beeswax, whale oil, or nut oil. However, there's evidence of the use of natural gas lighting going all the way back to 500 BCE in China. The Chinese developed natural gas pipelines made of bamboo, and records suggest that gas was used for lighting, among other purposes. Let's fast forward to the more modern development of open flame style gas lights. I want to focus on one person in particular, William Murdoch, a Scottish engineer born in the 1700s who played a key role in this development. He first invented a gas lantern, which he would use to walk home at night. And then seeing how well it worked in the 1790s, he installed a whole gas lighting system in his home. This would soon expand to other local installations. Murdoch had experimented with a number of fuels and he found that coal gas was the most effective at the time. There were several other inventors working on the technology and you can read up on the various developments, but I want to briefly mention some of the earliest installations of gas street lighting. In 1805 or 1806, the first gas-powered street lighting was installed in Newport, Rhode Island. London got its first installation in 1809 in the Pall Mall area, followed by Westminster Bridge in 1813. Baltimore was the first city to adopt gas lighting on a large scale starting in 1817. And over the next decade, a number of towns in Britain and the US started to be lit by gas. St. Petersburg, Russia was also a major early adopter of the technology. By the 1860s, the technology was in widespread use. While coal gas was the primary fuel for most early installations, several other fuels were used over time. In the late 1800s, natural gas began to replace coal gas in the US and elsewhere. However, the UK continued to use coal gas, later commonly known as town gas, until the 1970s. Two of the main advantages of gas light over oil lamps and candles were the efficiency and cost. You'll see this story repeat itself with pretty much every new lighting technology, but at the time, gas lamps cost up to 75% less than oil lamps or candles. There were reports that crime rates went down after installing gas lighting, which made them incredibly desirable and accelerated their adoption. And brighter light at night sparked literacy rates and manufacturing, helping propel the second industrial revolution starting in the 1870s. This is not to say that open flame gas lighting did not have its share of issues. Fires were common, especially where gas lights were used in theaters. 
When used indoors, gas lights were additionally problematic because they produced a large amount of heat and toxic carbon monoxide, which caused deaths. The level of maintenance was high, from pipelines to keeping the fixtures illuminated and working properly. And at the time, gas lights did not have self-starting features. The lights either had to run all the time, including during the day, or someone would have to come around at night to light them up. Even though self-starting systems do exist today, the open flame gas lights at Palmetto Bluff still operate 24-7, which looks really nice but is incredibly wasteful. Also, by today's standards, open flame gas lighting is just not very bright. At Palmetto Bluff, especially on clear nights with low light pollution, I found that most areas were still extremely dark. While the light was bright enough for really basic navigation in some areas, I don't think it would really be bright enough to feel safe in a modern city. Several new technologies were developed in the second half of the 1800s that ignited the downfall of open flame gas lighting. The incandescent gas mantle, which I'll cover in one of the next History of Light videos, provided brighter, more even illumination, even though it still relied on gas. And the advent of the light bulb led to some of the first AC and DC electric power distribution systems. Two technologies, the electric incandescent light and the electric arc light, were safer, lower maintenance, and more efficient. However, if you look hard enough in many major cities, you'll still find a gas lamp here and there. I want to give you a preview of the next two History of Light videos. In one, I'm going to dive into the technical details of open flame gas lighting, and the other is going to expand on a major improvement to open flame style gas lighting, the incandescent gas mantle. Thank you so much, and have a great day.